Okay, today I wanted to talk briefly through a recent re-edit of an image of Death Valley that I've done. The original image, which is on the left on the screen, is the original Photoshop edit, which at the time I thought was very, very good. I still think it's good, not great. The image on the right is the newer Lightroom version of the edit, which I think is is far, far superior. So I will take you through the Lightroom side of the edit. I'm not going to bore you with the details of the Photoshop edit. The Lightroom edit is really the primary focus of this video. Okay, to start this black and white conversion, we're looking at the before version of this image, which is simply the raw image right out of the camera with a few overall adjustments that we're going to talk about. That is the finished image. As you can see, it's a very nice black and white conversion with a lot of pop. So overall adjustments, what we did here was <clears throat> we dropped the exposure, as you can see over here on the right, by just a little bit. We added some contrast. We're plus eight on the contrast. We wiggled the highlights and shadows sliders, and that's, that's just a season to taste effort. Blacks and whites we set. Um, the way we do that is if you hold the option key and click on the little dropper, uh, while you're holding the option key, you can move the slider and you'll see the whites and blacks come and go. I'm not going to wiggle it because it will, it will sort of mess up this, this presentation. And then we added a little bit of clarity. And again, that's a bit of season to taste. In this case, we're at plus 26. I generally will also wiggle the texture a little bit if I feel it's necessary. And in some cases, the dehaze. Other than that, all we did was a transform. And in this case, auto worked. And that just sort of straightens and levels things up. So that's all we've done as overall adjustments. So let's get back to... The black and white so I'm going to for now turn off the black and white and you can see the raw image with all the adjustments were made I always adjust all make all the adjustments in color and this may look a little harsh in color here but again our target is a black and white conversion and the color makes a big big difference in the black and white conversion. If I were editing this to be a final image in color, it would be a bit different than what we have here. So again, it's it's what I'll go through. The process is to get the colors to where the, the black and white pops the way we want when we turn it on, which is right there. Okay, so what we've done here, we've done this with a number of masks and localized adjustments in Lightroom. So I'm going to turn the masks on and we have four masks in this case. And what I'll do is I'll walk through and I'll turn each one off and then I'll explain what I did with each one. Okay, so mask number one is the sky. And as you can see, when I toggle it on and off, it really gives the sky some pop. So what we did there was if we, we highlight that mask and we go over to our adjustments, we backed off the exposure a little bit. And again, these adjustments are only for a particular mask. And if we show the overlay, you can see where that mask is. So the only the red areas will be affected by these adjustments. So we backed off the exposure just a little bit. We've added some contrast up to 16. We again wiggle the highlights and shadows, season to taste. Shadows came down, as you can see, which darkens the sky and that's just a again a season to taste to get a good balance between the the clouds and the sky in this case that dark blue gets very dark when you convert it to black and white and we wiggled our black and our whites and our blacks a little bit and here's another one that is is good to look at which is the temperature the color temperature in this case we bumped it up to the warm side a little bit which tends to work well with skies Still looks kind of cool because there's a lot of blue, but we did warm it up a little bit. Other than that, um, I will look at texture and clarity for skies and dehaze if it's necessary. In this case, it was not. We did add some clarity. We bumped that up to 17. 
And that's all the adjustments that were made on mask one. Let's go to mask two. We'll turn that on. And if you look at the valley floor with the whites and the light beige colors, you'll see as I toggle it on and off how we gave that some punch. And let's look at the adjustments for mask two. Slight, slight reduction in exposure, a good bump in contrast. We bumped that up to 38. Again, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. Whites and blacks we did not change. We did wiggle the highlights and shadows a little bit, which gave it some more punch. And beyond that, we did, now in this case, we did, we did give it some texture. We gave it some clarity and some dehaze. The dehaze sort of clears it up and gives it some punch and pop. And if I put the overlay on, you can see where, that, where those changes take place. Let's go to mask three. I will put that on, which is the foreground, which is a linear gradient. The other masks were all radial gradients. So what I did in the foreground here with this linear gradient, we'll turn that on so you can see where the adjustments are, is up here we have no adjustments. What we did was we, what did we do here? Okay, yeah, just some texture clarity. Texture and clarity is all we did. And that gave us some punch in those rocks and it actually brightened them a little bit. As you can see, I'll turn the, the mask, the overlay off, and if I turn this off, you can see when I toggle it on and off, it just, it's very subtle, but it gave it a little bit of pop and punch. That's a season to taste also. Some folks would prefer that foreground maybe to be a little darker. In this case, I felt like I wanted to see the detail. Mask 4. I'll turn that on as you can see that the mountain range on the far side of the valley. Um, this happens to be Death Valley. I didn't did not mention that, but the name of the file up there in the upper left does say that. So this one made a big, big difference. As you can see, that mountain range is pretty hazy and lacking in detail. So we we fix that up. We'll show the overlay so you can see where that is. What do we do? Okay, we dip the exposure just a little bit. We bump the contrast up. We dip the shadows a little bit. But the real punch here comes in with the texture and the clarity. We bumped each one of those way up, 71 on each, and the dehaze up to 41, which is what gave those mountains that, that really good pop. That's all we did turn the masks off here. That's all we did to this image. And then I just simply click the black and white and we have a very nice conversion. So that's it for that one. Um, in some cases, um, you can wiggle the, from an overall perspective, um, and I've done this with some images, overall you can increase the, vibra the vibrance and the saturation, which will make your, your color image look look pretty bad. However, when you do convert it into black and white, it will really, really pop. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is, is wiggle the sliders, you know, do a what if. What if I did this? What if I did this? That. The big thing and the important thing to understand is that the colors and the adjustments on the color have a huge, huge impact on what the black and white conversion will look like. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you on the next one.